Hello and welcome to Froch on Fighting with me, Carlos Frochas. I don't know if that's Spanish, but here I am still in Spain and um, I'm going to give a response video to last night's world title fight between Alexander Usyk and Daniel Dubois. Right, so first things first, <sighs> was it a low blow? So the low blow, I mean, boxing is constantly surrounded by controversy and um, I suppose this was a little bit controversial. For me, in a word, was it a low blow? The answer to that is yes. It was a low blow. Now, under the Queensbury rules, if a, a, a punch lands on the belt or the box area, um, then it's considered a foul, an unintentional foul. If it's below the navel, then it's a low blow. It doesn't have to be directly in the gonads for it to be a low blow. It doesn't have to be direct full force impact straight in between the legs. A low blow is, as I've just said, below the navel. And the punch landed on the belt line. And if you look at U6, belt line, you can see his belly button just sort of steering out the top of his um, belt line. So sometimes it's a little bit higher. If the belt line is too high, the referee will clearly state before the fight, the belt's quite high, your shorts are high. Nassim Hamad used to pull his shorts up below his chest, really high. A lot of fighters do, they bring it up high, especially heavyweights with a big box protector. And the referee will point out at the beginning, this is good. He'll be pointing to the belt area and he'll say, if you land a shot on here, this is a good shot, it's a body shot. The referee didn't do that. So when that punch landed, if you look as well, when the punch landed low on Usyk's belt line, and, and it was half on the belt line, half on the shorts, actually, when you look, the glove, the thumb section of the glove was on the belt area, and the bottom part of the glove was on the actual shorts on his scrotum area, really quite low, too low, really. So it was a legitimate low blow. The referee was right, and instantly the referee, as soon as Usyk went down, the referee... Did that of his arms as if to say no knockdown. So he called it a no knockdown. And he also told Usyk to stay down and take as much time as you want. We've well, got up to five minutes of a low blow anyway. So there's an argument, should the fight have been... Did Dubois win the fight? He's, he's contesting it, saying he won. You can't really argue that he won the fight because had Usyk been told that's not a low blow and the referee would have started counting, you're not telling me Usyk would have stayed down. He would have got up, took his count and carried on as far as I'm concerned, because he's a warrior, he's a world champion, he knows the rules. The referee said, stay down, counted it as an illegal blow and gave him a time that he was allowed to take, up to five minutes. I think he took, what, about four, four and a half minutes, took the best part of five minutes till he felt fully recovered. It was well within his rights to do that. And the referee, in my opinion, was right in giving him that extra time because the, bell was, the, the shot was borderline. But borderline also means an illegal foul. Whether it's intentional or not intentional, the shot was low, so the referee did the right thing. Other than the foul then, albeit controversial, what did you make of both performances? I thought that um, Daniel Dubois boxed really, really well. He got in there, he was confident behind the jab. He was getting out jabs, he was getting, he was getting caught with a jab. Some of them ferocious right, straight right jabs, which actually ended the fight in the ninth round was landing flush on his face, but Dubois stuck with it. He was using his jab, he was looking for the body shots. He threw, actually, he threw a couple of shots that were borderline body. He, he threw one on the side of the hip and one also to the, to the left side of his, his cup, Alexander Usyk's cup, because he, he did mention to the referee a couple of times during the fight, hang on a minute, these are swaying a little bit low. So it wasn't, it wasn't the only time he'd been hit low. But, do you think he was just moaning now? Or do you actually think? I think he was pointing out, listen, Usyk's 37 years old. He's been in the game a long time. So he's a, he's, a, he's a wily old fox and he knows the rules and he knows the game. You don't want to be getting hit low all night. You don't want to be, and if he is, he's going to point to the referee, listen, I'm getting hit low here. So he was right in pointing that out. Um, Dubois fought really, really well. He really did. He got in there, he was confident, I thought. I thought he believed in himself and he stayed with it. He was jabbing, throwing right hands, he was looking for the body shots, but he was getting beat to the jab. Usyk's jab was fast and phenomenal at times. Just takes his time, moves his head, bosh, straight in with a jab, straight down the middle. Dubois' face was was um, smashed back. His head was jarted back quite on, on quite a few occasions. It was getting just getting beat to the jab. And um, the south or left cross was getting through as well, the straight left cross. But listen, round five, we had what we had. Usyk was dropped. Usyk got up. Dubois there, for me, missed an opportunity. I think at that point, he knew that Usyk was hurt. Whether it was a low blow or not, I'm saying it was an illegal low blow. It was a foul. But whether it was or not, one thing's for sure, Usyk was in pain. He was troubled. He was down on the floor for three and a half, four, four and a half minutes, and he was taking deep breaths. You could see he was in trouble. So that was the time for me 
for Dubois to really strike. Strike while the iron's hot, go for the finish. Maybe not go hell for leather, maybe not the finish, but put the pressure on. Really send in some shots and put lean on him. It was two and a half minutes left in the round. So for me, that was a wasted opportunity. That's probably a little bit of inexperience. But all said and done, the better man won. The better man on the night won. Alexander Usyk was a different class. He, he, he kind of, he beat him to the jab. He maneuvered him. He was throwing lots of feints, putting him where he wanted him around the ring. And he was beating him to the punch and landing that backhand. And round six, seven, and round eight, he was in charge, in control, winning all them rounds. And then he landed three or four shots at the end of round eight, which, which you've obviously seen. And Usyk was badly hurt. He landed a jab, a left cross, a hook, another shot. I think four or five shots even went in. And Dubois went down quite heavily. He was hurt. He got up it was towards the end of the round. So he got his minute rest. And he come out in round nine. And he basically got stopped then with what looked like a jab. It was a powerful jab. It wasn't just a jab. It was sort of stepping forward with it. And he threw a really hard ramrod like lead right hand. And he's, he's a sapper. He was hurt. His legs went. He stumbled. And he went down to the ground. Now, I'm reading a few bits saying that Dubois quit. Listen, Dubois probably saved himself for another day. He probably knew he was getting beat. He knew he wasn't going to win the fight. He was getting tired. He's a big lad. He's getting tired. And Usyk, we know he's such a strong finisher. We know he comes into his own once he gets his distance and his timing. So would it have been, would it have been fair for, for Dubois to win that fight on that low blow if the ref would have called it a legal shot and, and Usyk would have said that? Would have all been complaining, saying that's, not, that's no way to win a world title. But listen, if it was a body shot and Usyk went over and he was hurt, and that's another thing. He instantly went down like he'd been hit low. He got hit, he went straight down. When you get hit with a body shot, there's a delayed reaction. Because you get hit with a body shot, then you have to breathe. The diaphragm doesn't work properly, and you can't get your air. You're sort of, <laughs> you're stuck. And then if you panic, and if you don't like to stand up and suck it in like a warrior and keep going and grit your teeth, then you take a knee, something I'd never do. But you go down and there's a delayed reaction to a body shot. It was no delayed reaction from Usyk. Usyk got caught low on the belt line, borderline, whatever. Borderline's illegal. It was a low blow, and straight away he winced and went down. The referee crossed his hands as if to say, illegal blow, you stay down, and sent the ball over to the neutral corner. I did think the referee was a little bit unsure and could have been a bit more sort of clinical with his decision. He should have maybe warned the ball, clearly warned him for a low blow, or took a point if such a bad low blow, give him a point, but... It's, it's classed as an illegal foul, but unintentional when it's kind of on the, board, on, the belt, on the belt line. If you look at the rules, anything below the navel is an illegal blow. So the argument for it not being a low blow is ridiculous. And I think Frank Warren is putting in an appeal. Is that right? I'm sure I'm Yeah, hearing... Frank Warren is appealing the decision. So Frank Warren's appealing the decision, which he's going to. I mean, there's no rematch clause for the Boirusic. Nothing in there. So he's had a bit of a nightmare there. But we see it in boxing all the time. I mean... Otto Wallin never got his rematch. We see Tyson Fury on the floor against um, Deontay Wilder. I mean, how long was he on the floor for? How, how long did he get? When he got up, the referee gave him his nine, ten seconds. Then he got up, then he was making him walk. It was like 20 seconds were burnt down off the clock before, before the fight was brought back together. But this is professional boxing. Sometimes the bell, the bell ringer rings the bell a minute early. These things happen. It's all part and parcel of boxing and of this sport. And... In this sport, at the minute, the referee has to make a decision. The referee made a decision. It was an illegal blow, whether it was intentional or not intentional. We haven't got the benefit of the VAR like in football or the Hawkeye like in tennis. We have to go with what the referee says and then take his decision as, as that's it. There's no arguing. There's no complaining. And the fight went on from round five. Alexander Usyk took over, outworked him, dominated him, and then got the stoppage. So the better man won. But having said that, Dubois really did do himself proud. Did himself and his team proud. I know Don Charles is complaining and going mental this morning, but he's going to. He's got his best man, his, his fighter, who's just lost the decision. He thinks it was a low blow, and he's, he's, he's not, it wasn't a low blow, and he's sticking by that. And Frank Warren's appealing. But Dubois, try and forget all that noise and just take the positives from it. You've gone in there with an undisputed, unified, not undisputed, he's a unified world champion. He's the WBC of Tyson Fury, which I'm hoping is his next fight, by the way. You've got in there. And against, he's, only, he's only 25. He's in his mid-20s, 25, 26 years old. And he's gone in there and give a really good account of himself. Dubois, for me, could be the future of heavyweight boxing in Britain. Because who else is there that's going to test him? He's been in there now with it, at this level. Um, 
And he's done himself proud against Actually, an unbelievable fighter. He would definitely come again and learn a lot from it. Don't be too disheartened and don't dig your heels in too much with this, this low blow body shot, whatever you thought it was. You obviously think it was a good body shot. Trust me, it was a low blow. And you could see by, by Usyk's response, which I've already gone into, that it was a low blow. Sorry, you were saying. So from on that then, um, what do you think is next? Do Dubois first? I think Dubois well, can take his time now and build. He's, he's, he's had a great career. All right, he lost to um, Joe Joyce. He had a problem with his eye socket and, you know, he got outworked. There's people questioning whether or not he quit in that one. So would I say there's a heart issue? Probably not. I think there's a confidence issue. I think he's got a big heart. He got in there and he was brave from round one with Usyk. But when he got hit with that jab at the end, he kind of looked for the floor. His legs were gone a little bit. But he went down and he stayed down. On nine seconds, he stood up and he looked like he was okay. I'd have liked to have seen him stand up and stay up on eight seconds and carry on. But that's just me from my fighter's perspective, from, from my mindset point of view. I'll, I'll fight to the death. And not everybody's the same. I think Dubois will learn from that. And he, he saved himself for another day. He's still in his mid-20s. And he can 100% come again and, and maybe be the future of British heavyweights. Because he's big enough, he's strong enough, he punches hard enough. But he's still got to build. He's still got to get more confidence. But he's been in there. He's been in there with the best of the best in the heavyweight division. Tyson Fury aside, that was one hell of a fight and, and one hell of a performance from Dubois. Who would you like to see him in against then, though? Well, who, I'd like who, to who, listen. Anthony I, Joshua. Who, who, what of the heavyweights? Well, that's an interesting fight, Anthony Joshua. But Tell that, me a few heavyweights. It's, it's too too much of a risk with a low reward for, for AJ. He, he wants his big payday in Saudi with Deontay Wilder. So something like that. But at 25, 26 years old, he can afford to just build. Just have a couple of steady fights. Just building fights again. Get back. Keep the momentum going. Stay in the gym. Fight two, three, maybe four times a year. I think maybe a rematch with, with, um, with Joe Joyce would be a good fight for him. But I d Joe Joyce is obviously looking for, looking for. I mean, he's got the rematch with Zilli Zhang coming up. So maybe, I mean, that's jumping straight back in with the deep end. So I don't want to contradict myself. But if I'm managing Dubois, I'm thinking, let's just have a year. Let's have a look. Let's take him to America, do some sparring. Let's get him a couple more fights and build him because potentially he got the makings of a, of a real good heavyweight. That was a that was a brilliant performance. But let's be honest, he got beaten by the better man on the night. Usyk. Usyk was on his back foot under the cosh, badly hurt with that low blow, stroke body shot, stroke borderline, ambiguous, whatever. It was a foul. He was hurt. He was in trouble. And um, he managed to climb off the canvas, finish the round, there was two and a half minutes left, and then he managed to finish the fight in round nine. Dropped Dubois in round eight, finished him off in round nine. Was Dubois ever going to beat Usyk that night? No, because he had the best possible chance with that drop down, and he still lost, but he can come again. So now, what do you think is next for Usyk? Listen, Usyk now, I think, is coming towards the end of his career. I don't. Some people are saying that was a bit of a decline in performance and, and he's, he's past his best. I just think Usyk's brilliant. He's such a good fighter and he always picks it up as a fighter. And if he has a bad round or he's struggling, he's able to step on the gas and put combination punches together and get in range and land a couple of eye-catching shots and damaging punches. He does it every time. Every time you see him fight, he manages to... He's never in no major trouble, but whenever you're thinking, oh, hang on a minute, he bleeds. I do think that he's a bit tender around the body. I do think he's, the, the blueprint to beating him is to work the body early. Just try and target that body. He doesn't seem to like them breadbasket shots, does he? They, 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 they do get to him. And I'm, I'm not uh, going back on what I've said, because that shot from Dubois was a low blow. But he doesn't like low shots. We saw Anthony Joshua hit him with a body shot. He didn't capitalise on it. Dubois hit him borderline, but it was illegal. And that really hurt him, put him down for nearly five minutes. So I think that's what you've got to do to beat Usyk. But he's 30, what is he, 37 years old. I don't think he's got many fights left in him. I would say two, three maximum. And he's got to earn as much money as he can because that's the sport, it's the business we're in. So he's got to get the fight with, um, I mean, Hergovic, I think is mandatory for one of his belts. I don't know which one. Um, and Tyson Fury is the unification fight because he's got the WBC title. So we all want to see the Tyson Fury fight. But Tyson Fury will do what Tyson Fury he does anyway. I've been watching him on, on his Netflix series. He's, he's mad as a hatter. He's up and down as well, like, like mentally. But it thumbs up to that, by the way. I, I think it's a great watch. And I like Tyson Fury. I always have done. But um, I don't know how many fights he's got left. But I'm talking about Usyk. So Usyk, Hergovic, potentially. It's, it's not a massive fight, but it's, it is what it is. 
The fight with Tyson Fury is the one we want to see, the unification fight, the heavyweight unification fight with Tyson Fury. And I think that fight needs to happen in England. It probably won't. It'll probably happen in Saudi, but hey-ho. Um, what else can he do? There's, there's two, three fights. I mean, there's nobody really, for me, that a rematch with Dubois, if that happens, I can't see it happening. Uh, brick top, he'll be fuming. He'll be pushing it as much as he can to get that rematch. Um, but whether or not that happens, I don't know. His man was well beat in the end, wasn't he? Let's be honest. Um, but yeah, I just think I just think Usyk's got two, three maximum fights. Let's say two. Let's say Usyk's got two fights left in him. Maybe one more fight with Hergovic. Maybe a rematch with Dubois. Probably not going to happen. But the one fight we need to see before Usyk hangs the gloves up is the unification fight with Tyson Fury. And that is one hell of a fight. And um, who wins that one? I'll give you my prediction if that fight ever gets made. So just sticking with the heavyweight division, Robert Hellenius has returned an adverse finding in a drug test. What went through your mind when you heard this? Uh, I don't, well, it's, it's so frustrating and I don't like to go on about it because it, it's, it's my beautiful sport, boxing. I love this sport. And when you see people failing drug tests, it really does piss me off because it's bad for the sport. It puts a bad image on it. Hergovic failed the drugs test on the Friday, the day before the fight. The fight still went ahead. My question would be, when were people informed of this failed drugs test? Because if it was Friday evening or Saturday before the fight, the fight shouldn't have happened. Because say Hergovic would have gone in there and caused some serious damage to Anthony Joshua because he was juiced up, right? Then what happens? Do you go back and say, hang on a minute, We've, he failed a drugs test Friday night, but he still boxed Saturday and now he's caused some damage. So the whole drug testing issue and, and governing bodies needs a big reform. It needs, it needs waking up and shaking up. And we need to know what the rules and regulations are and how it's going to work moving forward. I think that was VADA, the voluntary antidoping. It wasn't UCAD. But in my opinion, if somebody fails a drugs test, and it's before the fight, the fight should not go ahead. So it'd be very interesting to know when them results were made public knowledge, or not even public knowledge, when they was made, when they was made aware of it. The promoter, Eddie Hearn, when did he know? When did the TV companies know that this drug test, and when did the British Boxing Board of Control know that this failed drug test had actually happened? Because if it was before the fight, the fight should not have gone ahead. So let's see if we get an answer from that one. So this has been another quick hit from Froch on Fighting here in Viva Española, if that's correct. Um, I just want to say thank you for liking and subscribing to this video. Apparently, the analytics, whatever they are, are off the charts and my channel is growing exponentially. So by October, November, I could be looking at 60, maybe even 70,000 subscribers. Every 10,000 subscribers, I send out a signed boxing glove. I don't announce it and tell everyone who's one, but people who get it know they've got it. So keep subscribing, keep liking. Thank you very much. And I'll, um, I'll see you next week.